In this video, I'm going to share with you a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to upload videos on YouTube so by the end of it, you can do it yourself even if you're a complete beginner. I'll also include my very own optimization tips along the way so your videos can get the views they deserve once published because let's face it, nobody wants to waste time uploading videos no one is going to watch. If you're ready, let's get started. Head over to youtube.com. On the top right hand side corner, click on sign in. You should see a pop-up window asking you to sign in with a Google account. You can use an existing Gmail account if you already have one or create a brand new one. It's up to you. If you're planning on launching a YouTube channel to promote a business, I recommend you create a separate Gmail account specifically for it. If you need help with that, you can watch my video, how to start a YouTube channel right after this one. Once you've signed in, just click on the camera icon in the top right hand side and select the upload a video option. This will take you to the YouTube studio environment, which should display a pop-up window asking you to drag and drop video files to upload or alternatively to select a file directly from your computer. As a demo, I'm going to use a video of four cute puppies I downloaded for free from Pixabay earlier on which I saved on my computer. To upload this video on YouTube, I'm going to use the select a file option and fetch the video directly from my PC, which will automatically trigger the upload process. At the bottom of the screen, you should see an upload progress bar indicating how much of the video is left to be uploaded. This process is generally very fast, but will obviously depend on the size of your video. While this is happening, you can start entering details to describe your video starting with the title. The title is one of the most important elements for your video to be discovered. As a matter of fact, the YouTube Creator Academy makes a point of saying that well-written titles can be the difference between someone watching and sharing your video or someone scrolling right past it. So spend some time crafting a compelling title. Think newspaper headlines. And although it can be up to 100 characters, it is recommended you don't go beyond 60. Otherwise, your title will get cut off on mobile phones. Finally, make sure the most important keywords are right at the front of the title, as it will be used by YouTube to rank your videos in search results. The question is, what keyword should I use here? Before publishing a video, I always do some keyword research to figure out what people are actually searching for and if it's worth making a video about it. To do this, I use a tool called vidIQ, which helps figure out just that. Once you've logged into vidIQ, just click on the keyword tab and search for the keyword you want to target. In this case, I'm going to search for puppies as my video is about puppies and look at the search volume for all these related keywords. You'll have to pay for the pro version of vidIQ, but there is a free version available. You can find the link in the description below. All I need to do now is to craft my title so it's compelling, under 60 characters, and has the most important keyword at the front. So I've come up with four cute puppies you'll have to see to believe. Moving on to our next field, description. For some reason, YouTubers often neglect the description of their video. This is a big mistake you don't want to make. Here is why. Firstly, the first few lines of a video description are displayed in search results, helping viewers make a decision to watch it or not, and on the video page itself. Secondly, according to YouTube Creator Academy, well-written descriptions with the right keywords can boost views and watch time because they help your video to appear in search results, so don't ignore them. They also recommend you put the most important keywords towards the beginning of your description. So although your description can be up to 5,000 words, I recommend you focus your efforts on the first few lines and include one to two main keywords in them. Here is a quick example of a description for this video I have put together, which includes the keywords I am targeting. Cute puppies and the more generic keyword puppies. You can use the description field for many other purposes and to add even more value for your viewers, such as adding a table of content. Adding timestamps to your description will create a chapter in the video itself so viewers can jump straight to the section they are interested in from the description. It will also create chapters directly on the timeline of the video itself, which is pretty neat. 
You can add hashtags to help viewers find your video when they search for a specific hashtag in YouTube. The hashtags will appear right under the video and just above the title. You can add links to your other social media accounts to drive more followers to your brand. You can also add links to other websites such as affiliate partners or directly to products or services you may sell yourself on your website. YouTube also allows the use of emojis which is something I like to do in my description to make it look neater. All in all the possibilities are endless so don't hesitate to be creative. Our next step is to add a thumbnail to our video. This is by far the most important component to entice viewers to click and watch. YouTube will suggest three different random options you can use based on the video you've uploaded. But since this is such a powerful element, I suggest you create a custom thumbnail instead to maximize your chances. If you don't know how, let me show you a simple method that will produce stunning custom thumbnails for free. Head over to canva.com. Canva is an online drag and drop graphic design platform you can use for free to create awesome designs for all your social media accounts and more. It has pretty fine templates set to the exact dimensions you need. If it's your first time using Canva, you'll need to create an account using one of the options available from the homepage. Once you've created an account, just click on the Create a Design button and search for YouTube Thumbnail. This will open a workspace matching the exact dimensions required for a YouTube Thumbnail. You can start searching pre-existing templates and drag them onto the workspace. Some of them are free and some you'll have to pay for. I quite like the look of this free one so I'm just going to drop it in. I like the headlines font but obviously the dog featured on this image has nothing to do with my video so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to replace it with an image that matches my video so it doesn't deceive viewers. To do this I'm just going to grab a screenshot from my puppy's video. You can do this using your default video player from your computer. Scroll through the timeline until you find something suitable and do either a print screen using the Alt plus print screen key on your keyboard if you're using a PC or Shift plus Command and 3 on a Mac. Then paste it on your workspace using Control V on PC or Command V on a Mac. I'm just going to adjust the image to the right size and send it to back so the headline sits on top. My thumbnail is now taking shape. I'm now going to change the title a little bit by adding colors and shadows and play with the lighting and contrast of the image so it really pops. And that's it. All that remains to be done is to download my thumbnail somewhere on my computer and upload it as a custom thumbnail which will fit perfectly. Custom thumbnails are available only for verified accounts so make sure you verify yours as part of the process if you haven't done it already. Once verified, which should take only a few seconds, you can load your custom thumbnail. Most of the heavy lifting is now done, so we should be able to run through the rest of the upload process quickly. Before I do, if you like this video, remember to subscribe for more tutorial like this and click on the bell button. And if you fancy supporting my channel, I would be grateful if you can hit the like button. Our next step is to add our video to a playlist. If this is the first time you upload a video to YouTube, you won't have any playlist just yet, so I suggest you create one. Creating playlists is a way to organize similar content under a category or specific topics. For example, I have created separate playlists for Facebook, Google My Business and YouTube marketing strategies which I can display directly on my channel homepage. By organizing your content this way in playlists, there is a great chance viewers who like a specific video from a playlist will watch more of the videos related to that topic. Playlists are also another way of being discovered by users as they appear directly in search results. Let's go ahead and create a playlist in which I will be able to add my puppies video. I'm going to call this playlist Cutest Puppies on YouTube. To add a video to a playlist, all you need to do is tick the box of the playlist itself and that's it. YouTube will want to get some information regarding the audience of your video, more specifically if it's made for kids or if you want to restrict it to an audience over the age of 18. 
These choices are up to you and will be specific to each video you publish, so I recommend you read the related information. In our case, we can say no to both. Clicking on the More Options will open a new panel with a range of, you guessed it, more options, starting with Paid Promotion. You can tick this box if your video includes any paid promotion such as product placement or sponsorship deals. This video doesn't, so we'll leave it blank. The next option allows you to add tags to your video and provide even more clues to YouTube about the topic of the video itself. Far less impactful than your title, thumbnail and description, it's still worth spending a bit of time to add tags to provide more context. For this, I simply use vidIQ again. Select all the keywords you believe are relevant and copy and paste them directly in the tag field. Once you're done with the tags, select the language in which the video was made. You have the options to add when and where your video was recorded. I personally never bother with this. Moving on to license and distribution. Two options are available here. Choosing the standard YouTube license means your video can only be watched on YouTube and cannot be reproduced or distributed while choosing the second option means you give the right to anyone to download, edit and reuse the video if they want to. I personally always go for the first option and leave the allow embedding and publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers ticked as it will help the video with becoming more visible. You can also choose a category you feel is most suited to your video. In this instance, we'll go for pets and animals. Finally, you can set how you want comments to appear and if you want to show how many viewers like and dislike this video. Again, I generally use the default settings here, but it's entirely up to you. Once you're finished, you can click on next. This step is all about promoting your channel further and encourage viewers to watch more of your content by adding card notifications to your videos. Two options are available here. You can overlay cards directly on the video itself and suggest other videos or playlists viewers might want to watch, for example. You've all most likely seen this before. Here is an example I have used on one of my videos. The other option is to add an end screen to your video, which will appear in the last 20 seconds of the video, just like this one. This is a powerful way of promoting your channel or brand further and to keep people watching. You can add five different types of elements in an end screen, including a playlist, other videos, call for subscription to your channel, a link to your website, or another channel. Whenever you upload a video on your YouTube channel, I recommend you use both options I've described. Let me show you how, starting with creating an end screen. Click on the add link. This will open a new window from which you can add elements to your end screen. As already mentioned, you can choose between five different elements. To add an external link, you'll need to be part of the YouTube Partner Program. If you're not part of it yet, you will not be able to use that option. You can choose an end screen format based on predefined templates. For example, clicking on this end screen would automatically include a video and a call to subscribe button. You can drag elements wherever you want on the video and delete them if you want as well. Alternatively, you can create a custom end screen by selecting which elements you want to add. The only prerequisite is that your end screens must include either a playlist or a video. Let's create a custom end screen and start by including a video. Just click on the element link and choose the video option. You can pick between three different options here. The first one will automatically feature the most recently uploaded video on your channel. The second one will allow YouTube to select a video from your channel that best suits the viewers. And you can choose the third one based on your very own video library. Add more elements if you wish. Bear in mind, you can add up to a maximum of four elements. Note, the timeline has automatically placed the end screen 20 seconds before the video ends. To see what your end screen will look like, just bring the starting point a few seconds before that, then press play on your video. Once you're happy with the results, click on save. You should see a green tick indicating this has been completed. Time to now add a card. This process is very similar to adding an end screen. The main difference here is that you can add a card anywhere on your video. 
move the cursor on the timeline where you want the card to appear. Then click on the plus button next to the element you want to add. When choosing the video element, you will need to be specific and choose either a video from your channel or another channel. You can add a custom message and a teaser text within the card, which is pretty cool. Both fields are limited to 30 characters. Once you're done, just bring the timeline cursor slightly forward and press the play button on the video to trigger the card and see the final result. If you feel your card is not placed exactly where you want it to be, you can change it by using the timestamp right here, which will move it to the exact desired spot. Your video can contain up to five cards. When you're happy with your selection, click on save. Once again, you should see a green tick indicating this step has been completed. We're all done. Time to publish our video. Click on next. There are four different ways you can publish your video. Let's start with the first one. You can make your video private, which means only you can watch the video. It won't appear publicly, but you can invite people to watch it via an email. Viewers who get invited will need to be signed into YouTube when trying to view the video. Your video can be unlisted, meaning it will not appear in YouTube search results or on your channel, but Anyone you share the link with, such as friends and family, will be able to view it. They will not need to be signed into YouTube. The public option will make your video available to the public. Anyone on YouTube will be able to view it as part of the YouTube search results with or without an account. It will also be displayed on your channel. While making it public, you can choose to premiere your video, which allows you to live stream it so all your subscribers can watch it together with you. They can comment and interact with you directly while the video is being broadcast. Finally, you can schedule the publication of your video to your chosen date and time. This is the option I use the most as it allows me to pick the best time when I feel most of my subscribers are likely to be online. There is also the ability to premiere your video as part of the schedule. Once you've chosen the most suitable option, click on the blue button on the bottom right hand side and wait for the magic to happen. You're done. Your video is now published or scheduled to be, depending on the option you've chosen. I have taken you through the exact process I follow every single time I upload a video. And although at first it can come across as time consuming, trust me, once you've done it a few times, it will become second nature. And if you want your videos to get views, I thoroughly recommend you don't skip any of the steps I've just covered. Give it a go. Let me know in the comments below how you get on. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, happy marketing.